So we got big news. Uh, today's uh, podcast is on Sunday. Beginning this week, we are now going to be releasing four podcasts a week. We've been doing three. Uh, we're going to add another one in by demand. Uh, so many sponsors want to join in. So many people want to hear more. So, Dad, they want more of Unashamed. So should, we're gonna, Shouldn't we have discussed this? Or no. no, you just you know I'm producing. We just keep keep churning. Just you're like a hamster in a wheel, Jay. You just got to mm-hmm. keep running, keep running. Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday are going to be our podcast releases. Uh, we got some cool guests we're going to have on here. You know what this means? I'm going to have to start letting y'all talk more. That's right. That's, just, that's the number one complaint. Jay's done. Jay's talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> they want to hear more from me and Dad. So check it out this week. Tell your friends. Recruit other people. Uh, Unashamed Nation is growing, and, and we do appreciate the opportunity we get uh, to talk for a living. I am unashamed. What about you? My point is what we read the last time we were together. When in John ten eighteen, he said, "No one." takes it from me talking about his life yeah in death yep but i lay it down of my own accord here's this this statement i have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again and, and that's what they were struggling with they well said, wait a minute let's just think about this i mean because the next chapter lazarus was raised from the dead i'm sure he spent the remainder of his life on earth Talking about and answering questions about well, what was it like? I mean, what boy? He's you like a hero. Four days. You remember they got up. They yeah. later on met all up at his house. Yeah. Why? Because they want to talk about it. And they said you were dead. You know, did you see a light? Did you see the song? But here's what I'm saying. There's a difference in being raised from the dead. Did you see the light at the end of the tunnel? You know. Well, there's a difference in being raised from the dead. <clears throat> and someone rising from the dead by his own authority. That, that's the difference. That's why I'm saying who Jesus is is of greater impact. Because here's a guy, you know, I know God, the Godhead is complex, but he is one with the Spirit and the Father. And it, since he has the authority to do this, that makes him more awesome than everybody else who could possibly come back from the dead. It's like if I hit a hole in one, we all talk about it because it's almost a miracle, right? But if a guy was standing there and said, you want to see a hole in one? And he put some mojo on my swing and the ball to make it go in the hole. Well, I I'm, I need, this guy here is way more important than me. <laughs> <laughs> and his golf game. Because I'm looking down. And you run with him, thinking, you won't have to practice near as much. I thought I sliced that thing, <laughs> but it went right in the hole. <laughs> so that that's was my only conjecture. If you introduce who Jesus is, then when he died, you start saying, well, wait a minute, he's a different being than everybody else that's been on the planet or will be. But I think the reason they missed it is the same reason they all missed it. I mean, we've seen this in John over and over and over again because they had a, just like with the guy in John 9, they had a bad view of what his purpose was. See, they they had a view in their mind of what the Messiah was going to do, and all it was going to be was make Israel the greatest nation on earth. And rule everybody else. That's that's all they were thinking about was the physical. And he never could get them to understand that this was this kingdom was not of this world. It was yeah. bigger. See what I'm saying? So yeah. that bad theology that they had learned their whole lives as good Jews now comes back to haunt them because he's telling them, no, this is what it's going to be. The kingdom of heaven is life. The kingdom of heaven is life. The kingdom of heaven is life. And I've got to be raised to, to lead this thing. And not only did they miss him, they missed the purpose of why he came. See, but Al, it was just, just a bad, bad way of looking. Every, I've met maybe two or three people on the earth who said they weren't going to die, or they had some power over death outside of Jesus. Well, you I told was, the story I, about the guy who was going to drink the battery. He was. Acid. I mean, you know, he. But I was. You thought, saved I that thought, guy. How is he going to get out of this? We were down to the battery acid <laughs> in a metal <laughs> container. He was fixed to prove that he had the power 
And I thought, now how in the world is he going to get out of this? Because somebody's going to have to call 911. I'd call him now. Because he, <laughs> he ain't going to have long. He's not going to have long. We're, we're fixed to drink battery acid here. So he got right to the cup. And he was like, I can't. It, it's not going to work. Because you don't believe. He pointed at me. He said, you don't believe. I was like, don't believe what? He's like, you don't, you don't believe in this power. So that doubt is is could cause me some problems. I was like, my doubt or your doubt? <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> if I were drinking the battery, I said, I, I might be with you but there. I saw he manipulated people because he's like, if this miracle wouldn't work, yeah. he's like, well, you don't, you didn't believe strong enough. Right. If you believe it, I could have done it. Well, what, what a, what a deranged. So I was just making a point. Sometimes when people say Jesus was raised from the dead, they miss like somebody else did it. You know, no, he 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 had he was in full control of death and life. Now, granted, he's a different kind of being. Because it says the same spirit who is in yeah. us, Romans 8, 11. Well, said it makes a point. He is, his body, at the same time, which is pretty interesting, his body did not see decay. When I people, love that verse. When people die, your yeah. body begins to decay pretty well immediately. That's right. That's Acts 2. Peter but, preached but, that. But, uh, but, but he and, and also... Peter, Peter and them made a point of that. They said <coughs> right. His body didn't And by the way, that was a prophecy from, was it Joel 2? Oh, yeah. That, so this had been talked about hundreds of years ago. Oh, yeah. That his body would not see decay. That's right. So he'd been around a long time. We were going to introduce our guest. Well, but, we will. But, we'll uh, get there. But a small, this is the, this a small <laughs> argument <laughs> broke out pre-show. And, and we just here. decided to start rolling the camera. But I'm sitting here wondering, why am I here? <laughs> what is the purpose I for say me that sitting every in this day. chair? That, that's a, that's we a said that for 130 place. episodes for Jace, and now it's to his podcast. Well, unlike Jace, I do not have the gift of gab, <laughs> or a.k.a. blowing smoke, <laughs> a.k.a. shooting off at the mouth. That's I a do. little bit more brutal than I've yeah. been saying. He always has a lot of stories. Oh, he never right. runs out of stories, but I never, I never uh, used that particular language. You know what's crazy language. is this is my guy. Yeah. This what are y'all running out with the so. mouth and gift a gab? <laughs> uh, all right, we'll continue your argument. Then we'll break. Well, we'll break I was just going to say in, in Peter's sermon when he oh, preached, he did say his body what was your line? Where was that at? That his body did didn't, not, see did not see decay. Where is that at? Uh, he's good. quoting Joel too. It's in Acts two. Yeah, he's what? Qu quoting the Jack earlier. Acts oh yeah, earlier. Acts two twenty seven. You because go. you will not abandon me to the grave. Good, good, good memory out. Nor will your let your holy one see decay. But that was right before before he quoted that. He said in twenty four two twenty four. He there's a couple things here. I'm not one of them. I'm not sure about when it said God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death. That's the one thing I'm not real sure about. But uh, if you read that, I don't know how you can deduce that it's agonizing to be dead. Well, I think it's more he meant to die. The agony is well, the thought, moment I of that. I don't agree because it, it, it's said because God well, you can raised, be wrong about but, something. That's, but that's, he said, that's, but God that's allowed on this show. Well, God, just think about what how it says it because I know most people think that and that's what I thought right. just because I'd never heard a different opinion. Right. But the more I stared at it, it says God raised him from the dead. That that happened, freeing him from the agony of death. Well, so here's another thing. I'm out. And so here's another so, thing. So before you answer, all right. what about all the verses about the groaning? Meanwhile, we groan. Right. But why would you groan? I would groan if I was in agony in some sort. Just a thought. Well, it ahead. could be, or it could be the fact that he's God in flesh, and the agony was that God can't die. No, because well, I agree life. with that. So what I'm saying is he may have been ex experiencing this solely himself, that only as the only human being that ever was God, he died. I had the same us. thought, so but that then I be. thought if we have the same spirit, we're in the same boat. By then the it way, could be. You may be right. That's why he had to become flesh or it just wouldn't have worked out. You're right, right on that, it's Phil. Exactly that's right. John 
yeah. five. Yeah. I think. Well, in Hebrews yeah. too. I mean, same. Uh, but I wanted to say this also. <laughs> but then he said, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him, which is why I think it freed him from the agony of being death, because he then uses that phrase, it was impossible for death to keep its hold. Well, that, to me, makes sense that it would be agonizing, because somehow or another he's in, he's in a dead state, which it's impossible for him to be in, and it has some hold on him for three days. But it was impossible for that to continue, because right. it just didn't... Well, it does maybe lead you to the greater question of what, where we go, what happens in the interim, all that. You know, what, is, is it soul sleep? Is it, are we someplace? Is there an Peter awareness? Peter and are Paul we, you know, said you, when you we don't physically know, but, die, yeah. it is in fact a departure. Your soul and spirit go to be with God and your body stays asleep. Yeah. When Jesus well, comes he back, uses he's going to wake it up. The right. phrase asleep but you know think about how to describe in our english language from greek what that is it's hard somebody said how about a sleep because it appears like what, what, what do you go call it I, i'm just saying well it's like dad <laughs> talks about the when you have a, a an operation and they, yeah. they literally put you to a deeper sleep where you can't feel anything mm-hmm you have no awareness that anything's ever happened. No I mean, time. I, it's no different than when you sleep, time. right? Because when so you sleep that, and you wake up, you realize. I think it. that is a good way to look at it right. when it comes to time. But but as far as you sleeping, I mean, I've had some wild, and you have too. While I'm sleeping, <laughs> Dad fights in there, this. There's like, a lot going on. Oh, Dad's a he's a warrior. He's I'm mom not. has to protect herself. <laughs> Oh, from been, Dad. It's, it's been you know, <laughs> a battle zone in my dreams. But see, look, I think you've stumbled up on a point. If uh, and I mean, it's, I mean, if stuff starts flying around, I end up just out of the bed, go womb, hitting the floor. I mean, you know. But just think about never, it. If if you had all these thoughts, motives, and desires, and you had no way to express it, wouldn't that be agonizing? Let's just say you. Let's say you were asleep like like that. Well, you got all this going on. It's not real because you can't really express it. That's why he gave us body, soul, and spirit. That's why I'm such a proponent in the bodily resurrection. I mean, Jesus was walking around saying, look at here. Look at my hands and my feet. He had yeah. some way, even though it was a cooler body, by that I mean he could change his form. He could transport. He could fly without a... Sh- out of you know space yeah, he engine, went, he literally left the atmosphere. So physically. okay, that's impressive. <laughs> wow, but I'm getting back to his character and what he said in his claim. When his death happened, I know some of these guys, and maybe it took the resurrection for it to sink in. They thought, you remember that time he said he had the authority to take. He's like, they're not going to take my life. I give it freely. I have that authority to give it and to take it back up. But you think well, about it. If you have that authority, you are the greatest thing that has ever walked the planet. But they didn't really even know post-resurrection because he was there 40 days. and But he left here say, it's still explaining the kingdom of God. So they still didn't fully get it until Acts 1, when the Holy Spirit came, showed up in Acts 1 and Acts 2. That's when they got it. So uh, I don't know if uh, you guys ever get a Christmas feel like it feels like you were a kid in Christmas. Is there anything that comes to your house when you're like, you see it and you're like, oh, it's like you're excited about opening up a box. Has that ever happened to you? Maybe 20 years ago. Yeah, it's still oh. happening for me. Yeah. Dad, you don't even open your mail, do you? People just open it and bring it to you. Uh, so miss- you're, miss- you're both missing something. So every month when my Black Rifle coffee, there's a box, mm. and I know exactly what it looks like, when it shows up, I mean, I, I feel like a kid at Christmas. I, I'm that excited about getting to open up this coffee. So I'm a member, as well as our podcast, on the Coffee of the Month Club with Black Rifle Coffee, which is what we drink here on the Unashamed podcast set in the lair. Uh, great company, great American company. Uh, their CEO and founder, he was 20 years in the U.S. Army, uh, Special Forces, CIA. These guys rock, uh, which were always supportive of, of veterans uh, and military so uh, we want you to check it out. 
uh, go to their website, which is blackriflecoffee.com, and you can figure out how you can sign up for their coffee of the month. If you like the single shot uh, servings, you can do that as well. Here's one that they support police. So you see, these guys are like us. They're not. They're not afraid in this uh, current cancel culture. So check them out, blackriflecoffee.com. Slash Phil. If you use the promo code Phil, you're going to save 20% off your first purchase, and that also includes the club. So you want to join up, experience Christmas just like I do. We're back to our <laughs> your plan. <laughs> well, that's what I like. You know, the Unashamed podcast is we don't know what the plan is till we. I mean, we have. I have some things that I've come up with, but that may not be where we go, which I think is why people like. Well, it. introduce Jay. It's hard to be. So we got to. Uh, so I didn't even thought about this, Jay. So uh, Phyllis is the one. So we were together with her last week, and she was like, "You guys need to have <clears throat> Jay Stone on your podcast." I have referenced you many. Well, times. Well, and I think it's because she's a podcast listener. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we do it, but we don't really listen, other than just me making sure it's going well. So, like, she's a fan of the podcast, so she was like, y'all keep talking about Jay Stone. Of course, she knows you, obviously, because, you know, you're in the family. But she's like, but, I mean, the audience would love to meet Jay Stone. She, well, I give know the, what's the quick bio? So, Jay is my son-in-law, which we've talked about him enough, the audience pretty much knows. He's he married to Anna. He's married to Anna, my oldest daughter. Dad has told the story multiple times uh, yeah. about how he basically had a prearranged. We, we were almost like a... Uh, these, we went back. We had everything but a, a well, dial. Phil right? gave the blessing before the sparks were even in the air. Well, right. What you need to do. Well, I was, wasn't, didn't bless it at that point. <laughs> I, I just, I I, was I just told the... him a, a avenue that was open to him. I said, I've cleared you, vetted you, and found you to be a man of, of, of worth marrying my granddaughter. I mean, don't I said, take she, this the wrong way, Phil, but it reminded me of a bunch of guys in a blind, like, seeing a truck you know a new truck on a lot saying you know where you you ought to go down here there's a new truck on the lot and go ahead and pick that thing up it'd be a great vehicle that's no, what it seemed i was like. just letting him know if he had thoughts about marriage if he wanted to be a eunuch the rest of his life i don't care but if you were thinking about marriage a... consider my granddaughter i think she'd make she's coming out of pretty i good think stock. in dad's defense i think what there had been i a cleared it but told her al had not cleared us you had to t al's gonna be the final word i'm sure through mom there had already been a discussion that wasn't a part of the, the truck buying discussion where there was a conversation that there may be some romantic overtones that are happening. Okay. See, I miss the romantic. Yeah, I, I, I look. I don't know that for sure, but no, me I knowing mom, I literally thought he said "make you move," and Jay didn't say a word. He just sat there, <laughs> and literally again? two weeks later, I look up and they're going out, and I thought he did that. <laughs> <laughs> so 17 years. So what uh, was your see, thought about the conversation? Well, y'all had already been having discussions, I'm sure. Well, yeah. you're living with John and Paula across the street from right. us. So, so you're in the vicinity. Which here, is here's, God here's the deal. I, God you know, I've, I've been around y'all for what, about 20 years now. Mm -hmm. So I would say the Robertson gene <laughs> is strong, <laughs> strong <laughs> in the art of storytelling. <laughs> Number one. I think our audience would agree. <laughs> and, well, the the exception is my wife, one of them, because she, she's like me. Yeah. She she doesn't like to shoot off at the mouth. She's super quiet. She's yeah. quiet. Well, so we get along perfect. <laughs> we'll drive all the way to the beach, and there will not be one word <laughs> spoken. That's Which probably is, a sign of trouble. No. <laughs> no. No. Nope. In their case, he's nope, right. No trouble. Just nothing to say. Nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of depressing. <laughs> no, I mean that's the way that's the way we like it. There's not one second of we if we drive to the beach. There's not one second where someone's not talking. Oh well, see, I couldn't handle that. <laughs> uh, I don't. So, so I don't enjoy that at all. all right, that's well, why we're married. Next, and if we've you been get a in, chance to ride with me to the beach, <laughs> go make some uh, other plans. We've been in one fight in sixteen years. How long did it that's last? A true story. About a week. Right. <laughs> it lasted about a week, but that's the only one. Right. And and that was and I mostly because we live next door. That so. was mostly Phil's fault uh -oh. because he Stay out of it, Phil. <laughs> Phil ripped her for for hiding money from me, and then she didn't talk to me for about a week, <laughs> and then that was the end of it. 
That's Wait a, a minute. That's the last fight we've been in. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember that. You hit, yeah. She hid some money from you? Oh, yeah, all of it. Well, <laughs> all the money. You Where mean you couldn't, you like couldn't get to any of the money no. that you actually were making? No, I couldn't I couldn't get to any I of it. I think that's when I said you might ought to nip that in the bud. <laughs> oh, yeah. she got mad. He was given yeah. like an overview of, because Nan's tight. I mean, she's Do like. you know where the money is now? Tight. Did y'all correct that? Oh, yeah. She takes care of all the money. I just, but you, so nothing changed. Right. Oh, but you can just get But to I it. can access she's it. She's very yeah, yeah. thrifty. Yeah. I'm, I'm being kind here. She's, she, very she, thrifty. she's got a, an alarm on her phone. Anytime I spend an amount over twenty dollars, it's me, 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 me. She'll call me up. She'll say, "What did you just buy at Academy?" <laughs> really? I'll say, "Battery." Okay. Yeah, yeah, it I would, like it would take me a while to adjust to that. Well, here's what's well, weird. I didn't know that she didn't get it from her parents. No, she no. did not. No. Which is why I'm kind of proud of her in one way because. She took a weakness we had, but she went a little far, you know, with it. But she took a weakness and turned it into a strength, which for that. Kind of like the me and the drinking when I was, right. you know, I saw Phil drinking way too much. And I said, I ain't doing that. Right. I mean, it, I like seven, six, seven you, years old. You saw old, a weakness and you said, thought, I ain't doing it. Would it be it. a fair statement? I don't know. Uh, but, I, but I've always thought that just from being in the retail business, people walking by at these shows and all that, and a guy wants to come up there and he might want to buy a DVD or a duck call way back in the day. Yep. And and I noticed they would they would they would they would look at the woman. <laughs> she's See, standing got, she's got, back from the table. She, she, she's back she's from the not table. standing. I would get physically nauseous when that would happen. Yeah, I'd saw that and I saw that a lot. So <laughs> I came up with an idea, a a uh, a constant I said, you know, I think most of the money the proceeds from the labor of humanity, I, th I think most of it ends up in the women's purses, not the man's billfold. Correct. It just seems well, that way. I could make, be wrong. People I, make jokes about that, but I I could be I wrong. Don't know. Well, and <clears throat> there's probably a lot of reasons why. Like most of the rednecks we know, I mean, you look in their yard and you look around in their stuff, and you see they, they have some impulse buying problems. Well, oh. yeah, male and female. Exactly. People, Both, all the time, they'll say, oh, a woman's spending all the money, and I'm looking at his stuff, I'm saying, Yo, you're, well, you're spending, spending some money. a lot of and it. And your purchases are usually a lot bigger, sort of like mom and dad. Right. Dad out, Mom outspends dad 1,000 to 1. No but doubt. But I will say this, Dad, when you buy something, it's big. I mean, well, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we're talking. You go buy a $20,000 <laughs> ski boat, she needs to go on a five-year shopping spree. <laughs> You but know, the point is, if you're both thinking that way, you wind up like where Lisa and I were. So the, back to Nan. And to defend her, look, she's not a controlling person. Mm -hmm. So and Jay, you, that's a true statement, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if she was controlling and had this issue, that, that would so be a problem. So when you do that's need right. some funds for your particular line of work, you're a duck she's hunter, a like deer hunter, right. you're a woodsman. When you need a little money, how do you go about doing that? Because she has it. Plastic. Well, he's plastic. Got, he's got the card. Plastic. Yeah, he can spend the money. I can spend so you it. clear it with her, or, no. or you just do it and I just do it. But he knows she's going to ask about and it, and then she asks, and then she. But she never gripes. She no. never gripes about she's it. Not a gripe ever. So she, she doesn't just like I tell you. Yeah, no, you know, no, no, never. Well, that's not a bad deal. Never. So look, and she's not a big. She's not just throwing money in the wind either. So she's no, no. pretty thrifty with, no. with 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 your money. That's right. That's well, right. that's why I'm saying it's not necessarily. No, it's it's the perfect. Of course, y'all both work at Duck Commander, so yeah. both of you have a. So salary. I want to talk. I want to talk yeah. about that. So let's take another break. So we, uh, Jace, we talk a lot about sleep on this uh, podcast because we have some great sponsors. One of them is uh, is Helix, uh, which has some mattresses that you guys have tried. Mm -hmm. um, they've launched a new company called Allform that does couches. And they sent me a couch. And I have to admit, I was surprised because I was expecting just like a big, fully ready-to-go couch. But there was like six boxes. And I was like, oh, you know, because I, I loathe putting stuff together. You know, Lisa will order stuff. and like, oh, come put this together. Yeah. But we took it all out. And it was just the big pieces and just a couple of things. But it was super simple. We put it together in about 15 or 20 minutes, which was amazing. For yeah. me to do something like that, I'm not a good put together. I'm, I'm shocked. So I want you to come check it out because you're going to want to get one too. I'm a couch man. I love a good couch. Yeah. I, I, everybody gets their little seats in the duck blind, and I'm like, why not a couch? A couch? Well, maybe we, we could put an all form couch do, in our duck blind. Couch. What about that, Dad? 
Did that you get up off of it to shoot? Well, and then you could take a nap. Yep. You can't take a nap in a chair. So, look, you, if you go to their website, uh, I want you guys to check it out. You, you're able to pick out your color, the size, because they have a lot of different sizes. Uh, we got, the like, the bigger one. Uh, and, look, this thing is without risk because you get 100 days to decide whether you like it or not. So that's over three months. So you get a full refund if you don't. They they also have a forever warranty, literally forever. That's what they say, which is I've never heard anybody say that, which yeah. means they know they have a They're good basically saying if you're driving down the road, you're not going to see this on the side of the road. That's exactly right. This, this isn't sitting in front of a dumpster. Of course, I learned the hard way. Don't stop. Don't don't yeah. pick it up. I, know the, I, I noticed the rednecks. They throw the couches out in the ditch. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. Don't ever go near that. <clears throat> don't don't go there. That's bad. So check it out. All form a l l f o r m all form dot com slash unashamed. They're offering twenty percent off uh, for all orders for our listeners. So check them out. All form dot com slash unashamed to get you a comfortable couch. Stay away from the dumpster. <clears throat> so, so Jay, explain your role. You were a teacher and a coach when you and Anna first got married. Yep. And then tell us what. So happened. I'll I'll finish the story that that Phil started. So Phil did the little deal in the blind. Hey, make you move. Everybody laughed. You know, huh? So. Uh, but I wasn't kidding. He, but he wasn't kidding, <laughs> and so I, I I realized that, and uh, I would say a couple months later, uh, Miss K. We were eating lunch, and she pulled me over there, and, and she said, eh, "You know, you know, Aunt, my granddaughter's got a crush on you." I said, "Yeah, I heard." You know. Then about a month later, Paula pulled me over there, and said, "Look, uh, Anna really likes you. You need to do something." <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm like right. she loves you. Move. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, "All right, whatever." So a week later. <laughs> Anna comes up to me and she said, "Hey, uh, this girl over here wants you know, got the girl's name. You know, she's single. You know, she's looking to date somebody. So she set me up with this other girl. Yeah, well, this is what kind of weird. ploy it was that? weird. <laughs> I don't know. I, I was, I, I'm, I'm stuck singing. on him, and I'm gonna line him up for somebody else. So I go out with this she's other girl. She's pretty smart. She was testing him. And it turns out the meanest woman I ever <laughs> met in my life. <laughs> Mean. It shows you how so she it. put the mean one on yeah. you, so you would appreciate the meek one. That's over right. There. That's right. Oh, so, man. so about three weeks into that, you don't think these women are not smart? Oh yeah. She pulls me out to the side and she said, "Look, you don't need to mess around with her. You can go out with me." I said, "All right. <laughs> Where you want to go?" So well, I like is, it that in this story, Jay's uh, just like willing to, yeah, all right, well, let's just see. Let's, let's let's. I've it. heard That's a lot on that. relationships <laughs> and how you form one, but that one is a doozy. Yeah, look, <laughs> At yeah. some point, I'm feeling like you need some drive. You know? Oh, I got plenty of drive, son. <laughs> plenty of it. So, we, you know, um, a few months later, you know, she's like, hey, let's get hitched. So we got hitched. Got three so kids. So she asked you to marry her? No, 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 no. I did. I, oh, okay. I did that. And he came I, to me. I came to Al first. He came to me first. He told did. Him. Even before they dated again. So how did you present it to her when you said, we're going to spend our life together the rest of our days? How did you how, how did you bring that up? To be honest with you, I do not remember. <laughs> oh, that's bad. Anything but that she I doesn't, does. You she, let it be well, known. She probably doesn't either. That's but, what's bad. No, she doesn't she don't, care that she you don't care. She, don't, she care. don't care that I don't remember, and I don't care that she don't remember. <laughs> Mm, that's why that's why it works <laughs> look the woman she don't cook a lick okay Are you complaining about this no i am not complaining oh. you will never hear me complain <laughs> about anything she does mm, anything i like that so the woman loves me she loves yeah. jesus and that's yeah. enough yeah and your kids and she's a great that's mom. right and my kids a great mom and jay Perfect. is a great cook and you learned how to cook and i learned how to cook mostly from you Yep. yep. And then Lisa and I are nearby, and we usually all eat together because yep. we kind of have a family. I always time. figured if the woman pulls out on you and takes off with somebody or leaves or whatever, or passes on, you say you would. I would think to have a semblance of food stuff, you need to have a certain amount of cooking skills. Right. I would just say anybody <laughs> ought to have a certain amount right. of cooking skills. I see on uh, that that black box that. Uh, <laughs> The, you know, the, the, the every time at the, the foods is sent, some guy go, walks up there and, you know, you get it. You walk back in there and you look in a box. It's pre-cooked, ready oh, yeah. to go. And the woman Frozen. tastes it. She said, oh, my goodness. Well, I, we don't have to cook anymore. She yeah. said, this is good. 
So cooking, they're jumping around, they're hugging and cooking. Happy. Oh, they're jumping up and down, saying we never have to cook again. <laughs> That's right. That's why the restaurants before COVID were always full. And now you got this comes to your door. So I wonder they just, how all that's working now. I mean, is that the way it's working? Is that's it, what they do. They don't cook. People don't cook anymore. I mean, it's just as a whole. I mean, unless you teach it and it goes forward, male or female, people just buy it. By the way, Jace, you're somewhat of a Bible scholar, uh, to your credit. Uh, <laughs> I must have won the So is, is, there, is there any clear text on how husbands and wives spend their money? Is there any clear text that's that is that even mentioned, uh, biblically speaking? You know, uh, I mean, um, you know, the the love of money is a root of all kind of evil. People who want to get rich, you got that. But the first but like verse, a woman's a woman's role in marriage and yeah. a man's role. I and, think uh, the answer is no. It, it's no, but I but I will say this. You know, because to me, I look at it from. When, when Jesus defined marriage in Matthew 19, which I'm so glad he did, because who would think in our culture 2,000 years ago people would have trouble identifying that a male and female getting married in the sight and of God. And by the way, I've heard people say that. Well, Jesus never addressed this, talking about anything that's not a husband and wife. Is oh, it? He defined oh, he defined it. it. He, he addressed it by fact, saying this is the way you do it. He got real specific. It very he specific. said in the beginning, God made them male and female. And then I love the next three words. For this reason, that's right. a man will be united to his wife. So he, he, he defined marriage. But then he said what they say at weddings, whether they believe it or not, what God has joined together, let not man separate. And so the two beca- becomes one. I mean, you are one. My wife, one of her many great qualities, is that she's constantly reminding me that every couple of days, you know, because we don't really have anything in common outside of Jesus. I always say this, but th- that's enough. It's plenty. It's more than enough. But she will say, we're one. Right. Where whatever you do, I'm doing. I yeah. So to me, this this where somebody got the idea of degrading women early in the 1900s, which is all all what it was. I know they wouldn't even let them vote till they. I noticed uh, it's been 20, around for a I long noticed time. yesterday. Uh, Trump. I, mean, I, I pardoned, look at that now and I find it pretty amazing. It's, it's Trump sad. pardoned uh, Susan B. Anthony for. Uh, Something about because she voted, or and so they had charged her with something. So I, I noticed yeah. that yesterday. It was kind of. But I noticed, Jace, you can elaborate on this. So, so my well, just to say, my point is, I think whoever's doing the providing, like my wife, the first ten years of our marriage, she worked her tail off in, in a in a corporate setting, in a job that she she didn't really did, like it. Well, right. Yeah. I mean, she she grew to like it or whatever. But I'm like, we're we're one. We're providing for each other. So I don't know where we got into these stereotypes, but oh, okay. hang, hang on for well, you. Hang on, Dad, before you read that. Let's take another break. So one of the things we uh, realize with um, this whole kind of uh, working from home is that people people are pretty creative, you know, during the coronavirus and all that, and, and to keep business going. Jason, you were talking about with the stock market. I mean, American business is tough, you know, because, I mean, like, everybody's like, some c- countries are like, oh, no, what are we going to do? And America's are like, we got to adapt. We got to figure out how to work. If we got to work from home. Whatever we got to do, we got to make it happen. That's you what know? made America great. Yeah. I mean, they're tough. Your and back gets against thing. the wall. They, they're they going to work. And Jace is our stock market guy. I mean, it's, it's coming back strong because, coming again, people strong. are making money. So we got a company here uh, that really understands this. It's called NetSuite. Uh, NetSuite by Oracle, and it's the world's number one cloud business system. And, Dad, you always talk about computer land. There really is this place called the cloud that has all this information for business and individuals as well. So what they do is they focus on financials, uh, human resources, inventory, e-commerce. And, look, you don't have to be a small company or a big company. You can be any size and use these guys. Really good. Uh, 20,000 companies trust NetSuite to make it happen. So we want to encourage you guys to go to their website. You get a free guide, seven actions businesses need to take now. You schedule your free product tour. So that's NetSuite, 
N-E-T-S-U-I-T-E, netsuite.com slash Phil. Get the free guide to get the free product tour, netsuite.com slash Phil. It is uh, worthy of note that one of the thing, and uh, it, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six, seven, eight, eight times in the three little short chapters of Titus, the Apostle Paul said Titus was my true son in our common faith. He didn't mean he was kin to him, but uh, I, I don't think he just meant in the faith he was like a son to him. And he's given him this various things to do, uh, starting with elders. And he, and he starts down in chapter 2. He says, teach the older women. Now, he's talking to Titus. He said, so in your teaching, in Bible studies, you sit down and, and you teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live, not to be slanderers or addicted to much wine, but to teach what is good. Then they can train the younger women to, and here's the list, to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled and pure, to be busy at home, busy at home. Yeah, they're the, they're, 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 they're the homemakers. I mean, they're, they're, they're uh, Miss Kay, y'all's mother, who is responsible for bringing y'all on the earth, uh, she gives me, without fail, ever without fail, she always gives me a briefing on the menu prior to it being cooked and served. She gives me a briefing on what's fixing to go down in the way of food and when, when it will be there. She, she says, okay, okay, now, when y'all get back after the podcast, I'll, I'll, I'll have some those quick fried pork chops if y'all want to. You can wait that evening if you want to. Did if you she got say that to today do. for real? Yeah, well, yeah. So well, every day. Pork chop? Oh, I Every was, day. Yeah, the pork, pork, pork chops are there, so. That's that, today. That, that's good news so for y'all. That's what Jay's is favorite. Yeah, I was but what I'm saying this is, was a story now look, this look was real. you said, well, you made her do that, and you, no, I didn't. I never brought it up. Always brief me on what we're fixing. No. Nope. I never said a word about it. Right. If she's going to leave for three days and all that, she'll say, okay, I'm going to be gone. I'll be in Austin with Jeff and his kids, and we're flying down on Friday, and we'll be back next Thursday. She said, what you got is you have a honey ham in there, and you can eat that with ham sandwiches, you know. Y'all, y'all can make ham and cheese sandwich if you want to. And no, she, she said, save the bone <laughs> now because I'll put that in beans. <laughs> So and she says you'll have hamburger meat if y'all wanted to try that, <laughs> and because Dan's gonna bring the hamburger meat on Saturday, you might want to have burgers on Saturday. She's giving me a a, a a food update and a menu update every time till it's 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 amazing. She'll she'll say okay, now look here, and she'll tell me what she think. Or she'll say, had you rather have this or that? You know, on th- Tuesday, had you rather have? If it's, you know, I could get some beans. <laughs> but you do live way away from civilization. That's true. Yeah, we don't run to town too well, often. Well, right. right. Like yeah. most people are sitting here thinking, well, she why are they big having cabinet. I'll discussion. say this. So this is, this is a good thing for the audience to understand, too. This is seasonal, though. Mom, at 72, at this season of her life, she's always managed her home. But she's going to be much more direct. When she was actually keeping all the books for the business and you were building duck calls and she was raising us and we were going to school, it wasn't quite this attentive that is detail correct. to you. So you got to remember as an audience, the people are listening, you're young in your marriage, you're like, well, my wife would never do that. Well, yeah, I mean, if she loves you, it's just in the season you are right now, you you know, mom wasn't that attentive back in the yeah. day. She yeah. couldn't be. She had to, you know, she had to take I care mean, of it. I mean, I'm finding, I'm looking, I'm looking <laughs> down at the floor. She stopped me today and she started going through the menu and all that. But if she does it every day, every day, and I mean, usually breakfast, dinner, supper, in between meals, she, she lines the whole thing out. But uh, to be self controlled and pure, be busy at home, to be kind, to be subject to their husbands, subject to their husbands. Ah, oh, you want to, because in, in our society now, they don't even like the idea of husband. Yeah, they call that wife. patriarchal. The nuclear family, they, nuclear, I don't know who got the nuclear part, 
what is it, fix the blow up? I don't know. <laughs> but they well, say the nuclear family. They mean, but they in mean this what Jace day and age, like. Jace, they don't like the idea, a certain segment of the population, the Democratic Party, they do not like so the idea said, of mama, daddy, right. children, and these qualities I'm reading. They they're not buying into what I'm reading right here them, at all. They call that a nuclear Would you family. agree to that, no, it's, it's true. And, and basically, there are organizations. So that has that helped our them. nation when people say, we're talking about a spiritual family, you know, and these are saved people. They fear God. They love Jesus like he's talking about. I'm looking at these qualities down, down, down here. I'm looking at all these qualities, and I'm thinking about Nan because Jay's married. You're a granddaughter. That that that's her. Yeah, she she never gets on anybody's nerves. Well, she to just, be fair, people also object to being in subjection to Jesus. Correct. With the same principle. That's right. the The problem is they're not going to surrender their will. To any anybody, but you heard yep. Jay so, said a minute ago. He said, I, "I would never mistreat my wife." I, I mean, right. and you'd be the same way, right? I mean, like, well, Ephesians five, look, says something about it. He, you know, all the husbands get up on the edge of their seat when it says, "Wives, be submission to the mm-hmm. husband," but they should sit back and let their you know back hit the seat when it says, "And you be like Christ, who gave Himself up for, for the." Her. It's in verse. Uh, 14, it says, so I counsel younger widows to marry because it said if they don't have the uh, control to keep themselves pure. He says, I counsel them to marry. I think it's interesting to have children to manage their homes and to give the enemy no opportunity for slander. And so when I hear something like that, so a lot of people say, well, how come she's monitoring what he's doing? I thought she's supposed to be in subjection. Oh, she's managing the home, and you're in it. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. You know, my she wife wants has come to know out where the money is going many times and said, "You want to buy what?" Because yeah. also, and she's like, "That's that's just dumb." Hey, look, I'm and like, I'm like, <laughs> "You know what? She's right." Well, that's right. I wasn't thinking. Well, I'm 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 in control of this house. Uh, no, I'm, she called me on this. That was a dumb decision. I've, I've often told husbands many, many times, if you have to tell your wife you're the head of the house, you're, you're not. not. You're not. No. You're and, not. And, and well, all well, these people in the world who say they'll they'll sit down, they can't get along with their wife. It's a it's a madhouse. And they'll then they'll tell me, I mean, I'd die for my wife. And I'm like, No, you wouldn't. Because you, you, you won't live for it. You won't even do this one little thing. That's right. Your head can't get through the door. You and then, you but then die. that's your go-to. You'll, you'll try to just, oh, I would die. I'll take a bullet for you. No, you won't. Go get me a gun. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it ain't going to happen. Yeah, laying down your life means more than just being killed. It means living your life well, for somebody that's the yeah. hypocrisy yeah. of it all. You know what was you gonna say, Jim? Uh, no, I forgot because y'all kept talking. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you got to jump in uh, here, Jack. Oh, I, 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 I've listened to your <laughs> podcast. Okay. Have you? Oh yeah, I, well, I, I, through Godwin's computer, who sits across from me while I work, and he watches y'all's <laughs> podcast. <laughs> and what you're saying is he's not quite producing the I've same. I've heard, <laughs> I've heard the podcast. What I'm saying is the Jace is number one alpha, <laughs> then Phil, and then. And then Al, <laughs> in that order, because then I went over there and God was said, "Look at these comments." So I don't know if you read the comments. <laughs> no, we don't, don't ever own read your. D- don't ever read comments. <laughs> we never. That's do. good well, advice. That's just a general rule, <laughs> right? So the number one comment so is, "Jace, please let your dad finish." <laughs> yeah, Jace, please can we let Al finish a sentence? Yeah. That's the number one comment. Yeah, on, on the podcast. Al no, sent no. me one email from this woman. Who he said, "Will you quit talking? You had a guest yeah. on there, and you right. talk." They go in on a morning duck hunt, and for one hour they're arguing about the spread, meaning too many decoys, right. not in the right place. This There's was not sp- spinning over here. It's that's yeah. spinning. That was not. And they're looking at it. They're saying the few ducks come by, they don't come in. They're like, "Okay, here's what the problem." So they go out and look. They'll just tear out of the blind. <laughs> Rearrange everything, get back on the blind, mm-hmm. and then, then they'll they'll hunt there for the next thirty minutes or an hour. They're like, no, no, but I tell you what we did, we went too far, and they go out there again. And they, I've seen them rework the decoy spread. That's called being a professional.
irrational. That's it. Y'all get y'all's feelings hurt when someone disagrees with you, and therefore you can't reach your potential. Yeah. Sometimes I wanna, we're I right have... here, and they're putting the decoys way over there, and I'm like, y'all got the decoys where if ducks light over there, they're, they're too far to shoot. Well, that was Jay. And, yeah, and Jay's just like, oh, no. I didn't agree with that. Way this no, I didn't agree with but that. But the wind, the way it is, the wind's out of the northeast, what they'll do is this is the we, all they're going to light in between I us. To. I will yeah. say it's last just like year, this podcast. Well, and, and, the old, the old and the pipeline. Cypress Lake hole, <laughs> that <laughs> worked. It did. I put the decoys out there and Phil said, too far. And so I said, well, this is the dumbest thing because he's shooting a oh, pop, yeah. the well, equivalent of a pop shooter. So what well, y'all realize we have a plan. And it's 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 getting harder as as their, their people are getting long in the tooth, you know. <laughs> so we get a plan to say, okay, you carry the seniors to the blind. Yeah. I'll carry the decoys. <laughs> you get the car battery, hook up the apparatuses, and hopefully we can get all this done in under an hour. <laughs> and I'm gonna run and get some brush and mm. go ahead and brush this blind before we hunt. So all this takes what an hour and a half? Yeah, every morning. To get just to get ready to duck hunt, there's been many a man fall by the wayside <laughs> trying to Jay hunt. Jay, you us. had to lose seventy pounds and get in excellent shape oh. just to be, so you and Jay's could oh, take I, care of all us. That's right. Older. That's right. And, so, and look, Stone went in the back end of military training and beyond. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, beyond, way beyond. Just to be able to handle the duck hunt. Phil, that's Nick, it. Phil nicknamed us Mutt and Jeff, which I didn't see that show or whatever that I didn't is. Either. Comic strip. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> so we nicknamed <laughs> him and Cy No Country for, for Old, old Men. Man. That's it. <laughs> and I'm in between. This Dude, is like, every day we hunt. This the, the old men down here. I'm in between, and the the, the younger, which yeah. aren't so young anymore. We're not that young. That's exactly. I right. have to admit, Cy's the only one that gets us riled up because Cy literally does nothing. <laughs> no. And he shows up. We haul him out there. He plops down, and he looks out there and says. Y'all got the decoys too far. <laughs> you got the decoys too far. Why are we you hunting know? this hole? I told y'all we should have hunted out here. He always has. Who a... took my bucket? <laughs> Who took my seat? It, it's all. It's this yeah. the whole time, so, and I'm like, glad you can make it, Sai. But, but what people don't realize is what they say all the time. People, my old friends, spouse, I said, boy, I sure do wish I could go hunt with y'all. I said, no, you don't. <laughs> you don't want to hunt with us. Right. That's the last thing you want to do. <laughs> you know, what do you mean? I said it would be the worst duck hunting experience of your life. <laughs> it's also everybody's so stuck in there. Oh, so, but we're almost out of time. I want to do want to tell them Jay about you and Cy. Um, Cy, Jay, and Cy do a lot of fishing stuff together. But yeah. y'all are doing a grill thing. So, where can folks go to see this new grill thing? Are there YouTube videos or? I want to let folks know about it because Jay's so, a, Jay Cy, is an excellent griller. Well, Cy's Facebook page. All right. It's got all of it. All right, so go to there. Up they there. make videos. They're funny. That so, thing is, it's a cooking deal now. It's look. handier in a pocket on a shirt. Jay is is our griller now. Even Dad's like it. He like when Stone's there. It's like He's Stone figured go- out how to how to cook old deer. He goes through an aging process. Yep. He's and, got uh, an old brine and, and thing, then they're it? and they're and they're and they're 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 basically you've got fire on them, but they're they're slow cooked. Mm-hmm. But they're hanging, they're hanging in there. You got a barrel, or you hang them. Oh, he, yeah. he should have checked with me before he did that. I know, I know how to correct that problem. Yeah. Don't he's shoot killed, old deer. like old doe, an old deer. Old deer. <laughs> I know huh? he's gonna say Don't that. shoot them. <laughs> he's culling the herd though, but he's <laughs> found a way to make it delicious. Well, I mean, really? hey, we appreciate your contribution to society. That's exactly right. Welcome, uh, everybody. Welcome uh, for Jay. That's really good. So we'll uh, we'll catch you guys. Oh, one thing I want to announce uh, as we close out here. So uh, this is uh, Sunday. Uh, podcast. So starting this week, we're going to be releasing, because of severe demand for more podcasts, which is amazing, and sponsorship, uh, to four days a week. So we're on Sunday, uh, Monday, nobody Wednesday, had, nobody and Friday. Nobody asked me about that. They didn't ask me either. Uh, and, and your name's on the podcast. That shows you how, who's running the show here. So we abruptly Sunday, end this bro- <laughs> podcast for an immediate meeting <laughs> for, for a week. <laughs> now you see who's really running the show. If we're not so, careful, we're going to turn this thing into some work. It is work, but it's good work because we get to talk about good stuff. So check call, it out. I would not call this work <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> it's not? No. No. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.